Hello, it's not unusual that people come to our school uh, from email to, to, to travels uh, looking for explanations concerning uh, what is usually seen in movies and uh, in histories about great martial artists um, concerning uh, you know, the, the attacks on nerves or nerve damages. Well, there are thousands and thousands of legends and thousands of stories about that and it's quite important in this current time to be able to, to filter uh, the many kinds and uh, levels of information we can have. In our school we do have this kind of study and uh, we will be showing some criteria to understand a bit better how we can approach the nerve damage or the nerve attacks. So, first of all, when it comes to nerves, we are talking about nerves and soft tissues. You know, there are these specific attacks to nerves themselves, but there are, there are also these studies which, um, which take uh, nerve and soft tissues. Of course, we are not talking about a medical school, we are talking about an ancient people that developed very clever and smart and uh, powerful ways to, to take an enemy or a, a arm or an, a, a leg or something or a, a particular part of his body or a function of his body you know, during a, a combat. Now, of course, we have all the tools and the knowledge today to classify and to sort out what they would do and what happens in the body when it comes to this kind of movement or of attack. So, um, we will be sure, let's, let's see together, let's understand some of the, of the techniques which we can employ uh, aiming nerve impacts or nerve attacks. Let's see, first of all we can do, we can attack his, his nerves or in this case soft tissue by using the inertia or the movement of our body and all these movements will be centered and focused in just one very small area. Um, it's not unknown, this kind of, of, of hand position. It can be called a ponken. Uh, many budo martial arts, many uh, gendai budo arts call this a ponken, so it's in a quite known name. And what we have here is a position in which we have a um, a large power in a very small area. You know, we can even uh, uh, reduce this to area instead of volume. You know, because it's almost a point. So, what we will be doing is instead of using the power of our arm to strike any part of his body, we will try to do it uh, as a spear. We'll try to uh, to get through him, and by this attack this area of his body. You know? So, let's see. He will come to a mako and here, just before he may enter, you know, we, have to, we have to be able to see that all my movement is centered and focused in just this point. So, if I very slowly, after touching him, if I do this, we have to, feel, to, to be sure and to feel that the chain of movement is not stopped. Whether in the root of the movement, the basis itself, nor in the hips, or back, or scapula, shoulder, um, elbow, wrist, nor fingers. You know? Now this is a kind of movement in which we try to, to, um, to stab him in such a way. Now, let's see how can we do if he enters the mapo, for example. Let's see if I'm here oh, already, please cut. If I'm here and, uh, well, I have my arm close to him. So, what I could do here, if we are doing this kind of study, is let's show it very um, let's, let's take a zoom here to see what we are doing. Here, here, and here. We have this, or we could have, you see, we have soft tissues here and we have a nerve here as well. The ulnar nerves, nerve. So, you know, please make it this, this strong position. Yeah, so we have his arms stretched, so his biceps are, they are stretched, you know, 
And so it's quite easy for us to reach this, this middle area. And here, we can have the easy access. Of course, we could also have entered here, here, I mean the same, the same places, however, using impact. But now, we have this. If this, were, uh, if this was just a study, we could just take him down, for instance, here, and take control over him. Now, of course, these kind, these kind of techniques can are, you know, um, very often they are support for um, transitions during other techniques. In Bujutsu, we can find this, let's say, for example, he entered a Mapu, and I have this, just to get his arm out of way. And to, and to make his arm unusable, so it's this using impact, both his, his movement and my movement meeting here very violently. Please take it off. Okay. So I can reach other areas of his body. And I can, uh, I could, I could feel that, that this arm would, uh, he wouldn't use this arm for quite some, some, some time. So what happens is, when it comes to nerves, you know, uh, attacking nerves, we have to take into consideration two, two lines of thought. One of them is that it causes pain, immediate pain. Now, when it comes to pain, uh, it's quite important to realize that um, doctors have, have found that the brain is not that sorry that the pain is not processed in any particular and specific area of the brain it means that pain is a result of an interaction you know your whole body perceives pain as this feeling we have now also for this reason we do know that different people have different thresholds at different moments so the lesson that we can take from this is that what works, what this kind of thing, if we, if we are talking just about pain, what works in one person maybe wouldn't work with another person. Now, uh, we can also say that for one person, you know, I just made this technique, it worked fine, but maybe in a real situation when we have our, our brain, our chemistry and your body um, altered, it may not work. That's fine, that's okay, and we have to take this into consideration. Now, the second part of the analysis is that the electric impulses that the brain sends to our body, you know, in order to, um, to, um, to cause motion, they have to travel to, through nerves. And if we have a, a damage which is strong enough, which is powerful enough to inhibit or to somehow uh, alter or change the capability of this nerve to, to convey or to transmit the electric impulses from the brain, then what we have done is we have taken that, that arm or that part of his body out of action, at least for some, for some moment. So, one more time, let's see some uh, other examples. He enters in one book. So, this comes as a disguise. You know, I am telling, I am uh, putting his attention, I'm leading his attention to this point and also his weight a bit backward. So I am safe here, safe enough to enter here. Let's see one more time. Let's show it quite slowly. Yeah, so I have this, this region here. Um, he feels pain, but pain is not the, the major or the key point here. What we will be doing is this and therefore damaging this whole area. We have soft tissues here, we have, uh, of course, we have soft, soft tissues, we have nerves, and we have, of course, bones here as well. But in such an angle that it is easy for a prepared hand or a prepared martial artist to, to cause a lot of damage in this part. And uh, let's see another, there are many, um, forms which could be seen as weird forms for us nowadays. For example, some people would use this as well, with a thumb, you know? And so many people may say, well, but over here, over I, you know, we have many attacks in this region, this region, 
this region and thumb as well. Now people may say, but those are very weird forms, you know, using thumb, the reason for that is that it's said that um, ancient masters were so, so strong, their, their hands were so strong that they could smash you know, small pieces of bamboo and it was part of their daily life, of their um, preparation. So well, this was a, um, a small talk and a journey about the uh, attacks on nerves and uh, we might be posting some more videos explaining a bit more about how our school sees and how we can how our school see, I'm sorry, and how we can understand better uh, what the ancient people would do. Thank you very much.